This is a brief overview of the web portals that are an optional module within Infor Cloud Suite Industrial Sightline. There are three different portals. There's a customer portal, a reseller portal, and a vendor portal. We're going to show the customer portal and the vendor portal today. The reseller portal is very similar to the customer portal. The only difference is as a reseller, you are collecting commissions, which you would see on the portal as opposed to just a, a resale price. So first, we're going to look at the customer portal, which is what we're showing here. And when the customer portal opens, the screens that you have are what comes out of the box. You also have access to the portal administrator, which you can modify uh, the look and feel of it. You can add branding to it if you want to match your own website or include in your existing website. And what we do now is as an account, I am logged in as a customer. Uh, you can either have account type customers, meaning these, these are distributors, uh, or you can have outside public customers which when they first create an order, it's like any other e-commerce site where they're gonna enter their information to create an account and that will create the uh, customer ID on the Infor Cloud Suite industrial site line side. So the first thing we do as looking at this customer portal is we have the ability to shop and we have different categories that we can choose from. So if I'm choosing mountain bicycles, for example, I get a subcategory asking me, you know, the different subcategories that I want to uh, look at. So you have the ability to create uh, top level and lower level categories, and you can change the look and feel of this too, if you wanted it out on the side or something. The other abilities I have here as a customer or logged in as a customer is the ability to look at any interactions that I may have with the supplier, which the supplier is us right? And we're pushing this out to our customers. So if you have interactions going back and forth, you could look at all of those interactions. You can, uh, you can read those interactions. And these particular ones were copied from the email because we have an Outlook integration. So on our side, we were able to capture all that as interactions and the customer logged in now can also follow those interactions if you want them to. Uh, other important things, if you're doing service type work, you can look at any service orders that might be out there. And there's also a knowledge base for service items. So if you have, uh, perhaps you bought a bicycle and you have an issue with the chain, you could look at the knowledge base and see if there's other uh, issues with chains and the possible solutions to that. You can look through that, that knowledge base, which is really nice. Order status, if I want to go in and look at the order status of all of the orders that I've created, I can see what that is. I can look at the invoices if they are shipped. In this case, this one's ordered. I can tell that it's not shipped yet, so there is no invoice. But if there was, I can, I can go and view or ask for a copy of that particular invoice. And of course, I can look at interactions related to that particular order that I may have had. Um, tracking information, of course. Estimates, I can look at that and we won't go into necessarily all of these. They are, they're very similar here and it's self-explanatory. I can look at all the estimates that I might have put out there to, to get pricing on certain items. Uh, do I have any returns uh, that I've sent back in the RMA numbers? I can look at my account balance and keep track of how much I owe or how, you know, what, what kind of business I'm doing with, uh, with these customers. So. You know, obviously this one doesn't pay me much in my demo database, so their account balance or their total due is, is pretty high. I can look at all of the invoices logged in as a customer. Here's all of my invoices, which I can also request copies of, so it will email me a copy of that. So there's no interaction necessary on your side to, to send that to your customers. They can access it uh, and get that information sent to them automatically. Consigned inventory, if you're doing consignment with customers, you can see all of the consigned inventory that is due there and how much of it was possibly used, or you can enter that you used it. Uh, you know, again, as a customer, if I have consigned inventory, in this case, I have 10, so I can indicate here that I've used five and that will automatically generate, generate the uh, transaction on the ERP side, letting you know that you can now invoice for that amount and move it from consignment and inventory. Before placing an order, you want to see what the inventory numbers are of your items. And these are the items that are for that customer that has customer pricing. So that's what they're seeing here and being able to uh, see that inventory. And of course, that can go across sites so they can choose which site they want to see that inventory in. Maybe, maybe it's not available in Dallas, but it's uh, available in Los Angeles. Uh, and of course, you can filter by the item that you're looking for.
So from a shopping standpoint, we're displaying at this point, we're just looking at top sellers here. Maybe there's featured products and all of this is controlled at the ERP level. When you create your items, you can dictate from the ERP side uh, and flag items as featured or top sellers and create all the pricing there. So you're not you're not coming into and modifying this website at all. You're doing this all from the ERP side and, and the pricing and uh, even the pictures and everything else that's exposed here is all done simply on the ERP side. Uh, but if someone is placing an order from here, if this is a customer placing an order, they can click on their item that they want to look at. You can get a description. Again, that's coming from uh, the overview on the ERP item side. And of course, the, the pricing. And if there's options for price breaks, they can see those uh, price options there. And I'm just going to place that in my cart. And once that's added to my cart, I can go in. And since I'm already logged in, it knows who I am. If I was a customer off the street, if you allowed that, uh, they would simply register and that would create a customer within the CloudSuite Industrial Sightline system. Uh, but here I'm just confirming that that is what I want to purchase and I'm going to continue. And then it's going to ask me uh, how I want to pay for it. My default is on account, but I can choose to pay by credit card if I wanted to. Uh, choose my shipping method. And I, once I choose my shipping method, it would automatically recalculate my costs. And if I wanted to give a PO number, I can, can certainly put that in here also since it's on account. And now it's giving me my total and submit the order. And once I submit that order, it copies over that order over to the ERP side as a customer order. You also have the ability to configure from here. So if you're using the configure price quote functionality, that will be exposed to this portal also. So in, in that case, they can come in here and configure an item the way they want it and place that order. Okay, now we're gonna go over to the take a look at the vendor portal. So I'm going to sign out and I'm going to go over to my vendor portal. I'm going to sign in now as a vendor. And from a vendor standpoint, uh, a lot of similar things. I can, I can create interactions uh, as a vendor with the supplier, which is us. Uh, the, uh, any documents that you want to transfer back and forth any announcements that might be coming from us to the vendor we can we can see that there so uh, the vendor will be able to see any announcements that we might be making maybe we're you know moving facilities or something and, and we want to let them know that the our delivery address is going to change again some uh, knowledge items but we we do have things like the inventory level projection now from a vendor standpoint they can look and see so that they have an idea for the items that they supply you uh, what that projection is because you're looking at safety stocks and you're able to see what, you know, the safety stock is that we expect for those particular items. So uh, the vendor can, can kind of stay on top of, of that to see how they're supplying you. Uh, there might be purchase price contracts. So there's contracts in here that we've already given and we can see what that is. And maybe we want to, uh, the vendor wants to change prices so they can propose new price breaks for you, or maybe they're lowering prices. So they can, they can propose new pricing in here and price breaks and then submit that to you for approval. Consigned inventory, nice for a vendor. If you have vendor consigned inventory, the vendor can manage that from this portal and be able to keep track of the consigned inventory that they have given you. And they can see that the minimum quantity here is 250 as an example, and the max is 500, and right now it is 240. So really they need to replenish and they'll probably uh, replenish it back up to the 500 to, to make sure they cover that minimum. So they know they can deliver based on that. Uh, item price requests. So if you are requesting pricing to the vendor, Here's where they can see all of that here electronically rather than sending emails back and forth. And you can view and add a response to those uh, here and, and create some pricing. You can look at all of the purchase orders as a vendor 
that are currently with you. And this is probably the, the most used form and the best form that if you are doing uh, vendor portals as the uh, customer of the vendor yourself, this is, this is the one that you really want them to pay attention to because this is where they can adjust those delivery or promise dates. And that drives your scheduling and planning. So if they're not gonna meet that due date, if they can update this and put their date in there that they do expect it to be delivered, your planning system will take over that due date and uh, plan appropriately without you having to do all that work on the ERP side. The vendor is updating it for you and your schedule will reflect that. And planned orders. If you want the vendor to be able to see your planned orders so that they have an idea of what's coming to them or, you know, if there's an agreement that they can react on your planned orders, they have the ability to see what your planning system is telling you that you need. Uh, so the, the vendor is, get, you know, getting first hand glance at that. So you're not spending time in between to release those orders and send them to the vendor. Uh, they have visibility of that you know, immediately. And of course they can track their on-time delivery uh, over time. So you can choose, you know, date ranges here and then look at the, you know, the different sites that you ship to. And of course, if you chose a wider range of dates in here, you would see what your on-time delivery is over time. And of course, this is what we see on our side, on the ERP side, uh, as tracking our vendors. So, you know, they're able to see how they're doing also. So that is a quick look at the customer and vendor portals. And of course, the reseller portal and customer portal, very similar, but works on a commission basis as opposed to a reseller base. Thank you for watching.